What you're looking at here is not a traditional 3D model. This is something called Gaussian splatting. Instead of building these scenes out of triangles, Gaussian splatting is a newer method that allows you to take millions of these little 3D semi-transparent points, build a 3D space with those points, and allows the viewer to see a scene in all sorts of different angles in real time. And this technique is starting to show up all over the place. If you're interested in the mixed reality space, you've probably seen it mentioned, but also it's being used in research, in real-time graphics, and more. Apple's even starting to use it themselves. We've shifted personas to a whole new rendering technique that's based on Gaussian splats. And you might have heard of these before, but you can think of them sort of like a cloud of points, but every point is kind of like a, a blurry smudge. And then when you layer those smudges on top of each other, you end up with this representation that's not just a lot more detailed, but also we think like more organic and lifelike. And this brings us to Sharp, which is Apple's new research model they just released to the public. You can run it on your MacBook Pro yourself and turn any 2D photo into a 3D dodge and splat very quickly. I got it running on my MacBook Pro and thought I would take it for a test drive. So let's take a look at some 2D photos that I've converted into 3D and we'll see what these Gaussian splats look like. Before we jump into the Gaussian splats, I want to show you this photo. This is one that I took and I did get converted into a Gaussian splat. So let's look at the original photo, turn it into a spatial photo, and then we can see a comparison of kind of the difference. And as we look into the scene, it's a nice clean 3D look. There we go, we'll make it full screen. And we see this little dog. This guy is much closer to us, and it's like a nice 3D spatialized scene. Now let's look at that same photo as a splat. So when we open up the photo, it looks kind of strange. We have to rotate it and get it nice and even with the angle of the camera. And now we can see there's much more depth to this photo, but you can kind of see how these points start to dissipate or kind of start to lose cohesion as the neural network is starting to guess what might be behind the camera. So for example, the angle of the shot would have been right about here. The model doesn't exactly know what would be over here, but it's making an interesting guess in terms of the depth and the details of certain surfaces like the ground here, or even this camera lens, which is starting to kind of lose some of the accuracy here. But that is pretty cool to be able to zoom in and get even pretty close to this dog while we can still see his general shape. And gosh, even the people in the back walking, that is pretty wild. Wow. We're going to look at some more of these Gaussian splats, and I'll overlay just the original 2D photo for each splat so you can have a decent comparison of what we're looking at. Sometimes they open up very strangely like this, so we have to just kind of rotate it and kind of figure out what the right angle is to look at this properly. And there we go. There's my pup. And this was taken as a portrait mode photo. So you can see it's much more blurry in the background. This was the right angle from where I took the photo. Let me move this down a little bit. The details look fantastic. So I get in really close. I can get in as close as you know, it allows really until it just kind of starts to disappear. But then since it was a portrait mode photo with a blurred background, if we go back here, we're just not going to see much useful data and of course it was taken at an angle so the neural net doesn't have any information about the dog uh, from that side let's move on to the next one this was the bamboo forest in kyoto i took the photo from this angle right here so from this angle it looks really good but as you rotate it it starts to get all wacky the trees are all looking kind of crazy jagged not straight but when we do get it properly angled here, it looks really good. Look at the ground here. Again, it seems, I'll say pixelated, but in reality, it's just all these little dots that are showing up. And let's see how deep we can go into this forest. Wow, that is pretty neat. Very cool. So each of these files, by the way, are about 66 megabytes. They're coming from anywhere from like a three to an eight megabyte JPEG. They all open here for some reason. Wow, that is beautiful. Let's move that over here. This one also looks super clear. Wow. 
Yeah, this is so cool. Much more depth than a spatialized scene. Now, this is truly not exactly a 3D model, but a space that can be explored. And this is just from one 2D image converted in seconds. So imagine what this opens up in terms of potentially game development, any sort of 3D modeling for spaces. Uh, this is going to become much better very quickly. And I really think allow, let's say, you fly a drone around somewhere, get dozens of photos, and then you immediately have some full 3D environment that somebody could explore virtually. All right, one more time. Let's just see how close we can get to this temple before it starts to fall apart. You can see it's, it's already fallen apart a little bit here. Wow. But still, if you look at the trees here, it maintains a good amount of cohesion. Ooh, I recognize that. That's me. I kind of start from behind, so let's try to again line this up with the way the photo is taken. Oh, wow, there we go. This was some fluffy pancakes. Man, look at the detail of that whipped cream, the pancake. I can almost smell it. Wow. There we go. That looks really good. And again, as we start to zoom in, still from that same angle, it looks really good. But as we start to go behind me, or rotate. That's where you lose all the detail, of course, because of the angle that this photo was shot. You can just see the ability for it to make this 3D model so quickly from a 2D image. Very exciting to see this technology improve even more. Thought I'd close it out with the dog in front of me here, and I wanted to give a shout out to Justin Ryan. He put a video out on this yesterday, which was really cool and got me inspired to make my video. So uh, thanks, Justin, for showing us how that worked. He goes into a little bit more detail in terms of how this actually runs on your local machine. It did take me some time to figure out with some help from ChatGPT, but definitely doable. You just follow the links and follow the instructions, but I'll add all the relevant data below. Let me know if you guys have any questions, and thank you for watching.